evening, the women's steeple chase final will be the World American and Trials records. Emma Cooper, the four-time U.S. steeple chase champion. Yeah, head and shoulders above the rest of them. Appropriate that it's raining, of course, for Coburn, but she's a very versatile athlete. She has great flat speed, great technician over the barriers. I just cannot see any way that she can lose a barring disaster. Leon O'Connor, the 2015 NCAA Indoor Mile Champion. Very much the U.S. number two this year. Fourth in the U.S. Championships last year. She fell at the quarter jump. Uh, on the final lap did O'Connor, but she's a different athlete this year with a PR of 9.18. And Courtney Ferrix, the 2016 NCAA Steeplechase Champion. You know, Ferrix has moved on this year as well to 9.24, her PR. Anything under 9.30, very much world class running. Seven and a half laps. Runners must clear. 28 30-inch high barriers, as well as seven water jumps. Four barriers and one water jump per lap. I'll well, just look at this pack jostling for position as they settle down here. Ashley Higginson in the lead is one of the favorites, the 27-year-old Kenny Ford, the Olympic Cup trials in 2012, and I guess she is that much more, that little bit more determined to go at least one place better here tonight. All the favorites advance from the preliminary round. Setting the stage for the best ever winners in the steeplechase at a U.S. Olympic trial. Stephanie Garcia in second place in the second English race last year. Tall figure. She went on to finish ninth at the World Championships Garcia with a pair of 923 from last year. She can count herself amongst the world's elite too. There's very few athletes who've gone below 9 minutes 20 these days on the world scene, even though the world record is that uh, 859 blocking from the Beijing Olympics. Ashley Hendrickson out in front. There's fourth in the 2012 Olympic trial steeple chase. Well, I'm good to see Higginson make me an honest. Garcia on the side of the team. Emma Cogba then tucked in in third place with them. Leo O'Connor in fourth. They'll both be very comfortable at this tempo. It's not particularly quick, but anything around, um, what, 310, 315 at the first kilometer would be healthy enough. Six laps to go in a women's steeplechase. Well, the Rio Olympics are less than a month away. We've got you covered with lots of Olympic trials coverage coming up. We're back tomorrow with more track and field before the start of women's gymnastics trials from San Jose. Culminating our weekend coverage at prime time starting Saturday at 8 Eastern and Pacific on NBC with track and field and concluding on Sunday as we wrap up the trials here in Eugene before leading to the women's gymnastics as the Olympic team will be named at the conclusion of Sunday night's competition from San Jose. Coverage of track and field begins at 7 Eastern and Pacific with gymnastics at 8.30 all over on NBC. No change at the front with Higginson alongside Garcia and Kenny. What's interesting is that Higginson and Garcia are the only ones really with an unsighted, uh, untroubled view of the barriers of their throats from everybody else, especially further back in the back. Has to gaze though for a mass of heels and elbows and bodies in front of them. That's not nearly as easy, so it takes quite a bit of pressure off being out in front. Higginson and Garcia, then Colburn. They have O'Connor in fourth. Garcia now hits the front for the first time. She's a far more confident Daphne Garcia this last couple of seasons. She used to be comfortable in this sort of company. Coburn, I feel we're going to this middle kilometer, just biding her time. Stephanie Garcia out in front. Well, we asked Emma Coburn about the challenges presented by the steeplechase. 
the steeplechase is a very painful event, especially in the last um, two or three laps. At that point, your body is so fatigued, but you still can't zone out and just focus on finishing because you have obstacles in your way that you have to jump over. So mentally, it's pretty hard the last two or three laps. Well, those barriers don't get any lower as you get more and more tired through the race. So I know exactly what she means, even though I've never run a chase. But every job is well a point to have there. And this tempo hasn't been particularly quick through the first half. It's just about every 20 minutes. And you want to have to be able to drop away. Uh, Cobra, I suppose you could say here, Kenny, is just using Garcia as the pace maybe him set it up for the first half. But what I should be interested to see is how near a Connor in third place there, almost uh, identical, they're like twin sisters, she and Cobra. How near a Connor responds to Cobra when Cobra does make a move? So Cobra can hurl the barriers in either way. How much of an advantage does that get her? It's a massive advantage. I think she's on record with saying that it, it stops having to worry about them, having to think about them. You know, we talk about these team teams having to sight the hurdle uh, three yards out. They try and gauge their strides leading up to it. And the more it does, it's like, the program doesn't have to worry about that. She can go into it. Each barrier is so much more relaxed. Coker has also said, I like the steeplechase because it's different and fun. You get to swing us around, and they put that running moves along the way. It's a nice change from the monotony of running in a straight line. So I think a lot of people would go up there as a, a cop-out. It's just a much, much harder event, you can argue, than the, the flat events. And it's known as the tough man's event because of its nature, but it's a barrier, as I say. It's constantly demand that you raise your game, no matter how much you're slowing between the barriers. That said, it is a running event. 99% of the time, you're running between the barriers, and maybe we make too much uh, noise and emphasis on about technique, moving the barriers in. Sometimes when we're commentating, it's really 99% of the time running. Top three will head to Rio. Stephanie Garcia, Emma Colburn, Rio O'Connor, leading the way. We're getting to the business end of the race now. Guess who's just hit the front? Near a car now with Lisa Hamill to a hotel from Hotel. Wearing's there as well. And the quickly on the inside, Emma, good run for you, lady. Who's the best player of the last year? Isn't he? Quickly having a good run as it begins to break up. Colburn extending her lead in the rain here at Eugene. Garcia. Second, and O'Connor in third. Come on, Ashley, come on! Seen the plan for the first time there as Emma just begins to turn the screw. Lear O'Connor, you can see, working hard to make that stride and stay the slipstream of Garcia in second place. But this was predictable, but how long can they hang on to Cobra, who was the third fastest athlete in the world this year with that new US record from five weeks ago? It's Colbert, then Garcia, then O'Connor. Now Garcia gaining ground on Colbert. Yeah, Garcia having a great run there. Matching Colbert straight for strike. Wouldn't that be a setup? Something could challenge Colbert up the final bend. The lead quickly is in fourth place. And then Ferris. O'Connor, of course, the inexperience of this sort of tempo is this sort of experience she had. Now, 18, a few weeks ago, she was in US number two. So, can she hang on to the pressure to be the play here now from Cobra? Gaps developing, can it? Colbert out in front, followed by Garcia. And you can visibly see Garcia there, under pressure. Nothing she can do to stop that gap growing between herself and Cobra. She's gasping for air and watching that gap grow and grow. There's the bell, the final lap with Cobra out in front, followed by Garcia and Quigley. Quigley having a brilliant run here in third place. She's so short of racing, and it may be racing for an Olympic qualifying, Olympic team spot. Cobra knows from a textbook race, just applied the pressure over the final two laps and the here's tempo that nobody else can match is very, very impressive indeed. So I know she's trying to keep her power dry for real. So she's doing a minimum necessary in the right hand. Emma Cobra with a huge lead, followed by Stephanie Garcia and Colleen Quigley. With Frerich coming on. It is Cobra out in front. Down the home straight away. Now fall over the final barrier. It is Garcia who went down. As Emma Cobra crosses the line, she is heading to Rio. Frerich.